Dale Carnegie talking about living in airtight compartments. He said, when the worry really compounds is when I'm looking at yesterday and I'm trying to redo things that went wrong or shift. I should have. God, I should have jumped in real estate when it was sooner. I should have made this happen. I should have fixed that relationship. I should have done this with my kids. I should have been more time. You can't, should have, you can't go back and undo it. His, his whole thing is live in airtight compartments. The past, I always say this, is your research and development. Take what serves you. You have to let the rest go. As hard as that is for some of you, you can't. Regret will only eat you alive. Wishing you would have, could have, should have will only dr make you have more of that. History is bound to repeat itself when you worry about yesterday. But also airtight compartments for the future. What if this president destroys our country? What if the economy collapses? What if, what if, what if, what if? If you are worrying, in most cases, you are looking backwards or you're looking into the future. You're looking at a future movie that hasn't been directed or made yet, and you're looking at a past that you can't undo. So why the hell would we obsess on it? We do. I still do. But what I've learned to do and what I want to reinforce with you is acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. And that leads me right into the next thing. Acknowledge it and don't take life so seriously. Don't take life so seriously. That's a tough one. Some of you are talking right now. So, Dean, you had me until now. Life is serious. Yeah, it is serious. And I worry too. Guys, if you think I'm up here and I share all this stuff because I got it all dialed in and it's perfect, then I'm your raw. I'm not your mentor. I'm not your guru. I am just someone who works on this every day of my life. I surround myself with people I think are the most successful on the planet, not just with money, but with happiness and joy. I talk to Tony Robbins a couple of days a week. I have, I have so many incredible people in my life. I, re, I burn through a book every 10 to 15 days now. Um, I work on this every day. So I would never sit up here and say, this is me, perfect, and just do what I do. No, I get it. I know your fears. I know your pains. I know your worries. I know your excitement. I know where you want to go. And I just want to give you an easier way to implement it into your life. So try to acknowledge and live in airtight compartments. Yesterday's gone. Rob what you can and throw the rest of the way. Tomorrow isn't there yet. One shift today in a positive direction shifts all the things of the future. So how can you worry about it? If you worry less today, accomplish more, the whole future changes, right? It's like dominoes. If dominoes has five different directions, which one you knock down first is gonna take you down a different road. Worry today, stay on the same path. Live in an airtight compartment and tomorrow will change all on its own. So don't try to predict it. You are the, 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 you are the predictor of your future, but it starts only in today. We only have today. We don't have yesterday anymore and tomorrow's not here. We only have today to work on. So do you want to, you want to attack life with vibrancy and enthusiasm and excitement today? Or do you just want to keep kicking the can down the road and 5, 10, 20, 30 years go by and you're like, how did that just happen? So see the funny side of life and don't take things so seriously. You know, we are all, this sounds really like morbid, but we are all dying, right? Um, if someone said you had a week left, if you had a week left, what would you do? How would you treat other people? How would you be grateful for the little things? I, I know everybody said this, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to give you this like, "Ooh, no, no crap, Dean." Of course, I'd be happier. But really, think about that. If you had a week left, would any of the stuff you're worrying about matter? Seriously, would it matter? Would you just want to go grab your kids, your husband, your wife, your parents, friends, family? Would you just want to go out and roll in the grass? Would you dance in the rain? Somebody said that before. Would you dance in the rain? Would you appreciate this, the tiniest little things? Of course you would. Can we live every day like we're dying, like, like we had a week to live? No, not possible. But can we remind ourselves and not take shit so seriously, for lack of a better word? When things go wrong, what if you just go, I can't believe this happened? Because your body, literally, literally think about it. Something goes wrong. Something's not right. You go, oh, God, I can't believe that. Why would that happen? I've been doing everything right. I've been working hard. I've been putting the time in. I, I, I sacrificed and it didn't work. Or you can go, I can't believe that shit happened to me. All of it I put in and has happened. Oh, well, what can I learn from it? Same situation. How do you think your body's going to feel? How do you think your gut's going to feel? How do you think the stress hormones are going to feel? How do you think you're going to portray to other people? Do you want to bring everybody else down or you want to bring everybody else up? Do you want to be the thermostat? Do you want to be the thermometer of life? You get to decide. 
And these are just all little hacks I'm trying to give you so you can live a different side, so you can take when shit goes wrong. The people who make it through take it, they understand it, they feel it for a minute, and they let it go. Don't take life so seriously and say, how can I solve this? How can I do this and not let myself suffer? Another one Dale Carnegie always talks about is staying busy. And that kind of goes along with what I shared before I wanted to share about solutions. When you're worried about something in your business, if you're in my, if one of my real estate students and you're worried about an employee or hiring employees or going quicker, or getting more leads, getting more clients, getting more sales, we can worry about those. But if one second, even an extra second, is on static worry rather than solutions, then you're doing yourself a disservice. If you get up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep because you're worried about it, Stop sitting there and let it go over in your head over and over and you think about it this way and then it comes back up and you think about it this way and then what if this goes wrong and then this can go wrong. Get your ass out of bed and write down five solutions. You'll go back to sleep. How do I fix this lead problem? I, I get more capabilities and then take action. I hire a virtual assistant. I don't know what the answer is, but you do. You have the answer. You know, you know one thing I, I stole from a friend of mine, uh, Gail Kingsbury. Um, when my kids ask me something, I'll always say, Listen, something simple, like, Dad, where's my glove? Baseball glove. I'll say, if you had to know, where do you think it is? I don't know, but if you had to know, I think it's in the back of Mom's car. All right, go check. Ask yourself that. Oh, I don't know how to fix this. Really? You don't? Not at all? Clueless? I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it highly. But what if you had to know how to fix it? Ask yourself that question. What if you had to know? How would you fix it? Okay, do the best you can every day. That one is so important because we beat ourselves up. Um, think about this. Uh, I've said this before, but if you owned a million-dollar racehorse, how would you treat a million-dollar racehorse? Would you give it really good food? Would you make sure it slept? Would you want it to be next to a bunch of crazy horses and let it stress? Or whatever a horse would stress over, right? Noisy horses, no sleep. Or would you want to put it in a place where it slept good and you took care of it and gave it the right food and don't, don't let it be, be mean to it? It's a million-dollar racehorse. It's an investment. You are your own million-dollar racehorse. But we will kick our own asses, for lack of a better word. We'll have a day where you get done so many things you didn't write down and the one thing that didn't go right or the one parenting mistake, the one business mistake. You didn't get those leads. You didn't make that call. We will beat ourselves up. Here's all I know. We can only do the best we can. So instead of judging your scorecard based on probably unrealistic expectations, how about judging yourself if you did the best you could that day? And if you haven't, if you sat around and did nothing and just thought about what's wrong with the world and didn't take action, then kick your ass, kick yourself in the ass a little bit. Get out there and take action. But all you can do, all you can do is your best each and every day. And when you do, it's the same one I tell my kids when they play baseball. I'm like, you're going to win today. No matter what, you're 100% chance you're winning today. And my son will be like, oh, I don't know, we might lose. I'm like, no, if you play your best, if you help out your team, if you're a team player, if you stay positive, if you go out there and give it your all and the score is 100 to nothing, you still won, bud. You still won. But you got to give it your all because if you don't, you'll come back and go, ah, I could have thrown that ball harder. I could have been a little less lazy in, the, in second base. I should have been more ready. You don't want to feel that way. Just give it your best. And when you're done, you gave it your best. Give yourself a pat on the back. This is, uh, this, this is just, it's so simple. Uh, but count your blessings, not your troubles. When you're feeling in that doom and gloom, when you're worried, again, you're not worry warts. Not everybody on here, um, not everybody on here is just worrying every second. You're like, Dean, I have not that much worry. But when you are worrying, stop. Catch yourself. Not only focus on solutions, all the other stuff. Immediately flood yourself. I want to give you an ex uh, example in my own life. Immediately flood yourself with the blessings you have. So I used to think, uh, you know, I, I talk about this and maybe it's the first time you heard it if you're new here, but success traps are harder to get out of than failure traps. When something's not going right and it's not working, you try for a while, but then you give up. But when something's working for you, then it's a success trap. I'm going to give you an example. In my life, I used to get up a lot. I still do once in a while, um, but get up at 2.30, 3 o'clock and just the brain would start going. And I think of all the things that I needed to fix and I would obsess over them. And sometimes I'd go down the negative path. I'm like, God, if I can't fix that, if I don't fix this and this doesn't happen, will I have enough money and you know, all the things that we all do. 
But guess what? I was getting successful and more successful and more successful. So then I started thinking, well, maybe that's part of my, my, my unfair advantage. I get up at 2 o'clock and I think through all these problems and I find solutions. It wasn't true. Completely not true. But that's what I thought for a while. It was a success trap. So then the only way that I combated it, the only way that ever worked, I tried, literally, I went through a, a phase where I was taking like nighttime, like p nighttime PM, like Advil PM to try to sleep through this two o'clock craziness, right? <laughs> Nothing worked. You know what worked? Is instead of thinking about my troubles and how to fix them, I try to flood myself with all my blessings. And I would just go over it in my head. God, I'm so lucky that I had my grandmother in my life. God, and I think about my grandma. I think about fishing with my grandma. I think about, oh my God, I was this kid with dyslexia and I got book, New York Times bestsellers, whatever phase this was in my life. If I had my kids, I'm like, oh my God, I have two healthy, amazing kids who love me to death. And I would just start stacking the blessings. And all of a sudden, I'd be asleep. If you can stack troubles, you can stack blessings. You just got to be consciously aware of stacking blessings rather than stacking your troubles. What's up? What's up? Hey, before you go, you need to watch these next few videos. They're absolute game changers. Hurry up and click right over here and watch them and I'll see you there.